according to unesco 1.18 billion affected learners due to covid-19 is corresponds to 67.7% of the total enrolled learners and 146 country wide closure be the primary secondary universities all it's like closure and it's according to the live data or dashboard of unesco so if you want to check on the unesco site i will put it in the show notes that's what is being impacted due to covid-19 to our education system to our kids what's going to happen with them let's listen to the intro Welcome to the Otech Talks podcast, where it's all about working on technologies. You will hear the latest tech information, and your host Kashif Manzor brings together product overviews, how-tos, best practices, tips and tricks, and troubleshooting techniques. Welcome to Otech Talk podcast. This is session number 73 and our topic today is to discuss on the education sector because we have a one speaker with us who is providing a very immersive experience to the education industry uh before we'll go and invite our speaker if you're new to the session welcome to the o tech talks podcast This is a weekly session, weekly podcast with the primary objective to learn and share with each other. It's a sandbox for technology insights, experimentation and inspiration with the primary objective of learning and sharing. And as we are getting into you know, I think settling back with the COVID-19 sort of realizing country sort of opening and the still question is open that what's going to happen with the schools when they're going to open and this is personally I'm also facing with my two kids that when they will go back to school or is they're safe all those are the questions are still going around and uh, what i realized from last 3 to 4 months that we need a new experience to get educated and this is also being you know realized by the schools institutes universities and tech companies i'm also enrolled in msc data science and ai so i'm doing uh, as a part time online learning where i'm learning um, on the artificial intelligence so i'm also fa- so realizing that what what changes need to be done and the similarly as a father i'm also facing an experiment experiencing with my kids what they need to learn in a different way and with the universities institutes and companies who are providing these tools and tech they need to help us to teach our kids in the age of coronavirus or covid-19 and as we have witnessed from our own experience some schools were able to train teachers roll out remote learning quickly and on the other side um, according to unesco there are a number of impacted kids across the world due to university school shutdown is 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 a is a big number uh, we need new tools and te- techniques to help us get educated kids and ourselves now according to the report published by world bank the covid-19 pandemic shocks to education and policy responses and they have hi- highlighted uh, there are some areas that even due to this one the dropout the student dropout will rise this is uh, another scenario which we need to look into that that we never thought about that okay schools are closed but it's going to impact to the other kids and according to the world bank report where they said school closures economic crisis and long term costs and with the school closures they categorize into direct education costs and what's going to happen with with them health and safety impacts education demand side education supply side from learning skills point of view to student nutrition situation and i'll put it in the show notes and then even they put uh, together for a long term cause how it's going to impact each and every one of us so i think that's a good to learn and then they 
three principles they have um, outlined for us that how we need to cope, how schools are closed, what we need to do. Then we need to the continuity, how the skills reopen, how do we need to improve the acceleration. And one of the, that point out of the improving and acceleration is focus on creating a build back better education systems. And this is where we, I think we are going to talk today, uh, which is our topic for today to discuss and invite another um, with us, uh, immersive experience founder, an organization or a tech company founder who has done it and who is supporting a lot of tech companies. And before we'll go, emerging technologies in education are playing a sig significant role. And this is what is happening now with the COVID-19. It just forced the education sector to you know, change the learning process for the students. And similarly, the emerging technologies need to enhance the way teachers and students work, teach, and learn. Few examples on the emerging technologies, how they're shaping are augmented reality and simulations, which need to be in place, education technologies based on artificial intelligence, and once the 5G technologies will be available into different countries, then the education sector need to invest on that one. And similarly, another area is adoptive learning, where the students uh, allow them to follow unique learning paths based on their interests and experiences. And the good part out of all these emerging technologies is the learning analytics, where teachers and administrators in the schools, universities, they monitor student behavior and progress. And they can change the course content rather than sitting on it, rather than keeping it as it is. And this is as a student of uh, MSc in artificial intelligence relations. I'm also observing it that the contents need to be be updated. Contents need to be changed based on on our experience where the students are putting together and investing their time to learn. That's some of the some of the insights on the education sector, where what's happening, where the emerging technologies are going to impact these four or five areas. Now let's go and uh, we will invite our speaker for today, and this new um, immersive experience solution I came to know during Step Conference 2019, which happened here in the Wayne City. And I got to know this organization and I liked it. So at that point of time, and then I approached him if you want to share your experience as a as a founder to, to the, and this is the right time with the COVID-19 where everyone is facing. So let's invite our today's guest. Welcome to Otech Talks podcast. Today we have a very special guest with us, Raywan Ho, the founder of Act Technologies with us. And we're going to discuss with him his journey, how he has started his startup, what he was doing before that. So let's not wait more and then invite our guest, Raywan. Hi, Raywan. Good to meet you. Good to, nice to, you know, during the COVID-19, it's very different time period we are living. Welcome to the Otec Talk podcast. Thank you, Kase. I am so honored and privileged to be invited. I I came from Singapore, bred and grown in Singapore, started in Singapore, and then married in Singapore. My kids are Singaporean. <laughs> uh, I've always wanted to be an entrepreneur since the age of 16. When an, a good friend of mine, she gave me a book called Rich Dad Poor Dad by Dad, Robert yeah. Yeah. Kiyosaki. At that time, he, she told me it was a good book, should continue and see what you like to do in the rest of your life. So it was a blessing in disguise and I was having a lifetime crisis. My dad was out of job and my mom was the sole breader. So I decided to do something. And I started teaching freelance tuition. And, and, and and the book taught me one important thing, keep your day job and start something small. But then I started to go to university and I started my first journey. It was it was enlightening. Uh, and then thereafter I left and I, I came, I started a business uh, of tutoring 
and then I left it with my wife and I went to the army. And then after that, I came out and I, I realized that actually education has always been my passion. It was my passion, has always been my passion. And I realized education can be a lot more immersive, a lot more engaging. And technology can do a lot more in the educational bit. And then I started thinking, how can I automate content? Content should be automated because it is free for with the use of internet and as well as the new technology with AI, VR, <laughs> all that coming in. So as such, I realized that why don't we have a company and call it Automating Content Knowledge for Training Education and Commerce. And then we gave birth to Act That's yep. wonderful, wonderful. Amazing. So, you know, the rich dad and poor dad changed the life and then went into army and then come back and then started. Now, what actually this ad technologies do, what they provide? And what is the special, what is the specialty in, in, in and, and what I'm talking about because as your, your startup or, you know, companies in the right fit with current scenario of COVID-19, so give us context, what they actually do from especially, you know, learning point of view, and then what were the basic, what are the ideas behind? Actech was founded on the idea that immersive content should be made a lot more accessible to people. What is immersive content? A lot of people want VR, AR, 3D, 360, but it was not easily accessible. And those contents were loosely fragmented or actually scenario-based tied to a hardware called the gear that most of us will be familiar like on Oculus, Magic Leap, and even HoloLens. So all these gadgets are good to have, very fantastic to have, but many a times expensive and not easy to proliferate in any company or even for students. So my, my founder, my, my ex-founder and me used to think if this thing can be easily transmitted through the mobile phones, it will be fantastic. It will be the winning and the most engaging platform that people want to, want to use for all the learning. And as a result, we, we came up with Actec Learn, which is our product that Actec uses to bring forth content to all the people across the world. Now, so is, it, is it a platform which you provide or how, how the mechanism work from an from a end user point of view? If, if I'm, a, I'm a student, so what should I do? I mean, what you provide, do you offer service to, to the education institutions, universities, or what should how, how it benefits me as a student? As a student, uh, I can benefit you if you come onto my marketplace platform and consume the courses that my clients has put on a marketplace for you to take the course through an immersive, through the mobile phone, and then you get a degree or certificate through attending the courses. As a, as a company, Stuff you can get all this through a simple medium where we work with a company to digitize the content onto our platform. Okay, so and why it, it's with education or immersive experience is it is linked to the way that you started your, your some career in, in, in tutoring or education. So why this concept came into your mind that, okay, I need to provide learning and development platform or? Because I, as a student, I find it very hard to visualize, for example, the parts of a machine book, reading the PDF file, books, and even PowerPoint slides. 
doesn't really allow me to visualize properly. Somehow, if this can come together in an animation or a simulation that is easily accessible, I think that would be a lot more easier for us. And as a result, we felt the educational, be it the childcare sector, the K child sector, or even the adult sector, if such medium is easily accessible, then it will bring a lot more learning and enhancement to steepen the learning curve. Okay. And how long have you been doing it? When you started? We started five years ago, mm -hmm. trying to in implement into the K child syllabus in Singapore, but we were too late because then the Singapore MOE, Ministry of Education, has already decided on a certain platform and a certain way that they want to do. So as a result, we then venture into the adult sector. Okay. Now, in the last five years, uh, what's the one thing you wish that you know before starting this, or starting this business? that the differences in learning and cultural adaptation is really very different across the world. And the network technology bandwidth of each country, though we thought it's the same, it is really, really very, very different. But well, we're still learning. And, uh, and uh, I think that's the challenge that proof for on our company that we need to solve and help everybody get that immersive across the world. All right. Now, I'm being a, a technology podcast, so I want to get, get into more detail of which technology you are using to develop or provide this, this platform. We are a very simple base HTML5. Okay. We use HTML5 coding with JavaScript, SQL, uh, backend stack, for this whole profile, uh, right. that's our text. Yeah. Okay. And this 3D experience, are you using some tool or how, how are you creating it? So the 3D experience and the AR are what we have developed in our company to allow us to adapt this form of images and rendering on the mobile phone, which makes the mobile phone a lot more easier to transmit without crashing the mobile. Unfortunately, I can't tell you too much because this is our USB in our IP. No, no, that's fine. No, that's fine. I'm just I mean, yeah, did, yeah. did you develop yeah. it or 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 did yeah. you we develop it in-house on our company? Okay. Now yeah. a you are you're not coming from a technical background, right? Are you one? Mm. So I'm did, not. okay, yeah. So did you hired someone or as, a, as an individual or did you you know connect contact back with some consulting company or who provided you the services or the te technical knowledge when you were you know going with this journey you know the Steve Jobs and Josh Washington story when they found that Apple right yeah so I have uh, Josh Washington uh, Washina, who is my ex-founder, who left last year. Yeah, so he founded the platform okay. uh, with our vision of how to make it a lot more animated and immersive. Right, and with this COVID nineteen coronavirus, did you see some spike in your business or your because this is what it is required nowadays? So how how you you dealt last two, three months, or is it the business was as it is? Indeed, uh, the coronavirus did accelerate a lot of uh, business for us. We do see a high uptake in the way online learning is being consumed. A lot of people are also looking at us to develop courses for them. Uh, we do see a 30 to 40 percent increase in our sales, uh, but we also see a challenge. We see that a lot of people are also um, still shopping. Uh, they're not very clear. Right. Although they know that the way to go is still online, but they're not very clear how they want to transform. Last year on two ideas, one is um, buy-in, 
from the higher management because a lot of them are from a different generation. And the other one is obviously budget. In view of COVID, a lot of budgeting has been cut. Although they recognize that this is the way, again, a lot of people being Asian and being prudent, they are not, uh, they are not, they are looking up, they are looking up. Yeah. I will use this word called shopping. Shopping. Mm -hmm. Right, right. And uh, so you already shared some of the books, primarily, you know, the book. Poor Rich Dad, Poor Dad. Any other book in, in your life which is greatly influenced? Built to Last by Jim Collins. Okay. And, great, and Good to Great also by Jim Collins. Mm -hmm. uh, another book I read a lot is Daniel Kim's Emotional Intelligence. Um, this book helped to shape the way we think about ourselves. As a founder, it's important to be a bit more uh, focused and more um, emotional uh, to what things are happening so that you can manage things and how do you build things that can last. Yeah. Right, right. And uh, during the last five years, has there any been a parent failure or a favorite failure which resulted into a successful you know, a journey or a actions after after that setback or after that challenge. Have you uh, can yeah. can? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, we almost went bankrupt in two thousand and nineteen, uh, first quarter. Uh, but uh, we were lucky. Uh, a few people believed in wow. us and gave us the opportunity, and I think that's where we grew. Yeah. And we grew tremendously thereafter. Yeah. So how you overcome them? I mean, at that point of time, primarily being in a in a management position. So um, a lot of savings come from ourselves, right? Uh, and also um, ability to make sure we we profile and manage the cash flow thereafter. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now, as you know, with with a lot of college and university students, which they are they are embarking a journey that okay, they wanna start up, start they wanna start a business. So there are a lot of incubators and startups communities are being being formed. So what advice would you give a to a smart any college student to enter in a real world, or maybe what advice would you give? Them? Um. I think to do to be a startup, first you must have yourself equipped with the right skill, um, the right skill, i.e., financial management skill, uh, management skill, and emotion quotient skill. Some of these skills uh, can never be acquired if you are straight away starting up. Starting up will allow you to have probably venture and adventure skills, but in my own sense, it's still good to work for people. It's still good to really actually work for people because some of those things that um, people can teach you, you can help you shorten. So if you are really adamant on setting up and starting up, you should start it when you think you're ready. And when do you think you're ready is when you are very savvy on those skills that I highlight. Management, finance, and self... Management in terms of uh, people and self-management, and lastly, uh, financial skills. Very, very, I think, valid and uh, good, you know, rightly said tips for management, people management, financials management. 100% true. And, your, and yourself. And yourself. A lot of founders don't know how to manage themselves. I mm. think that is the most important thing. That's the most important, right. And what are the, some bad recommendations you hear, uh, you know, when you, from last five years, some people are your friends or colleagues, you know, how to ignore that. First, how to recognize them, those are bad recommendations, and then how to ignore them. 
Never think that your product is the best in the world. Mm. <laughs> never, never think you have the best product, you have the best team, you have the best set of things that is happening in the world. If you think you're the best, you are bound to lose. Actually, learning is constant. Um, you're never the best. If you think you're the best, probably is you're not learning anymore. What? I there, there are so many things that throughout my journey, I noted that one should really, really be humble. One should really understand what other people are doing. How can you better improve yourself? Because you really, really never know the other end, somebody can be a lot more stronger than you are. Mm -hmm. All right, thank you. And uh, from a, from a, as a founder, what are the, what you do when you feel, you know, you are unfocused or maybe you are overwhelmed or you, so what are the tips you, you do yourself so that will help to others? Uh, I like to do one thing. Um, if things that I think I'm very puzzled and very unhappy about, I like to take a walk, put on my earpiece and put on an audio book and walk. If things that I think I can't even solve and I don't really have a solution and it's bothering me, I will go and sleep. Mm -hmm. Okay. <laughs> All right. And uh, for a management point of view, what are your favorite tool which is helping you day to day your job? Any favorite tool which you like most in managing your maybe operation, maybe reporting, or maybe day to day work, a to do list, any favorite tool or a calendar maybe? Okay, uh, I I use the Google Calendar a lot, but this is just an administrative tool. Um, on my own, I I tend to use this um, Grow Grow framework. Gaps, reality, opportunity, and weakness. Oh, okay. Uh, I I use this Grow framework, which I learned from a course a few years ago. Mm. And, uh, and the hierarchy of needs. Okay, yeah. okay. Right. Yes. So these are the few L and O D costs, uh, O and O D tools that I use to help myself yeah, in the day to day management. Like what are the gap? What is the reality? And what is my opportunity? And what are my weaknesses? All right. Now I've seen it in, in in your website uh, from on your product, uh, which is written as you know artificial intelligence and machine learning so yeah. what on which level you're using or how it's helping for the content creation or is it for the recommendations or where it is applying two areas uh, we are now diving into humanized chatbot okay humanized, humanized chatbot to bring form delivery a lot more easier uh, so we are hoping to 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 feature by twenty twenty one in Dubai on the human yeah, okay. okay, so uh -huh. And the other one is recommendation of causes. When one person goes on our platform to learn that, you recommend the type of causes suitable for the person. Right. Okay. So chatbot is one of the primary use case. Okay. From, from that angle. Right. And for a, a, for a reporting or a data analytics point of view to the lear, to the learning department or what you're doing, did you develop your own learning uh, solution? I mean, this reporting solution, are you using somewhere outside? Uh, yeah, we, we do for the, our own uh, data analytics and bring it into our platform by itself. Yeah. Okay. So there's and, the self develop. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And uh, how the business model from a from a revenue point of view is it platform based or is it user based or how is it? We have we have both uh, platform based development based white labor uh, and then we have the SaaS model. Yeah. SaaS model based. Okay, and in SaaS. Uh, you're using which, I mean, any cloud provider or, I mean, in Multiple. Okay. Multiple, yeah. We have from Ali Cloud mm -hmm. to AWS and Azure. 
Mm-hmm. Okay. And this in the SaaS model, uh, the, again, the pricing is based on on, on user. The user. Yeah. Okay. All right. And uh, from a, a content, if if a school, if I'm I'm running a school and I have my own content, so who's gonna help me to 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 you know, con- convert these content for to be able to be loaded into your platform. Uh, yes, we will do it. That's, that's your it. service, you're doing it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. And I've seen so many, you know, number of clients on your website. So all they're using for different, their internal learning as a learning solution or, or, or private education or maybe La, la, at the moment, those those clients are B two B. Yeah, B two B. All right. Yeah. So I think looks to me primarily the B two B, and then let and them. We also have a B two C now. Yeah, B two C. Okay. Oh, okay. All yeah. right. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Wonderful. Now coming to the to the conclusion. So if we will ask you, uh, you know. Final one tip you want to leave to the community or the a fresher who want to start a business. What what should we they be considering or taking care of it as a most important from your your point of view? Think twice. Think twice. Think twice. Because if you think that you really want to do it, you are sure you want to do it, you know no matter what you have to do it, you know, whether whether you affect your money that comes to your family, whether you will give up or not, think twice, think three times. And then if you think three times and you still want to do it, then just do it. Otherwise, you will regret it for your whole life. But before you do it, think twice because it's a very, very painful journey. Okay, all right. Yeah, think twice. That's that's I think the key mm-hmm. for for our for for the, our learners for today. That yep. there's yep. not not going to be a rain tomorrow. You need to think, think, think. What you're gonna do it and what are the objectives? You're gonna solve a problem. I, I agree with, with with you. You must be prepared to. You must be prepared to endure. Endure. Right. Thank you so much, Raven, for for joining us. I think it was a wonderful session. A lot of good tips you have shared as a founder and what are the tools common you're using, how the technology is enabling. And I think, because why I reached primarily to you, because with the COVID-19, the the way we are on remote, even my kid is, you know, studying through remote tools and and the challenge which we are facing, you know, day by day or day by day, that, okay, how the lessons are coming, what they need to learn from teacher. There are a lot of challenges. And I, I feel that you, this platform with the 3D, with the machine learning, the chatbot, will help a lot to the, to the college and university, especially this even for the kindergarten or the you know small, small schools. Yeah. We are, we are, we are working in all the sector. Oh, all the sectors. Right. Any concluding final remarks? I I really want to thank you so much um, for the opportunity, and I also think that uh, this shall not be the end. You can keep in touch with me. Anything that we can connect and help, let me know. Yeah, I'm happy to share. Thank you so much for listening to today's podcast, and uh, just to let you know, if you're new to the Otak Talk podcast. This is our session number seven. Was this session was seventy two, and we did a number of sessions on digital transformation. And if during the quarantine and COVID nineteen time, if you want to learn on the digital transformation, there are seven courses which are freely available. If you go to otechtalks.tv, you will find under the blog menu. And number of sessions are on the f- almost 30 plus sessions we have, co- we have covered on digital transformation. Please go and listen and share your experience, your knowledge your, with us. And if you want to be the guest on, the, on this podcast and you want to share your story, you want to share your technology tips, tools, 
you are most welcome and to just uh, you know announce a disclaimer that all these guests are coming on the show based on some interaction with during conferences or attending and then I'm approaching them or attending the startups community where I do some uh, technical insights or advisory sessions so there's nothing behind it just the show to share and knowledge with each other thank you so much for joining the session and look forward to talk to you thanks for listening to the otech talks podcast and be part of tech talks at otechtalks.tv it's a turf to share ideas insights and innovations